to Diaspora Connect on AAU TV. AAU TV is the voice of higher education in Africa. Today, I am on the campus of the Adventist University of Africa in Kenya, and I'm privileged to have with me the Vice Chancellor of this university, and he's going to talk about himself as a diasporan who has come to Africa to give to Africa, and that is the purpose of this program. I am the host of this program. My name is Ransford Beckwin. You are following this discussion on all our social media platforms and on our dedicated website, tv.aau.org. Before we start the discussion, let's go for a short break. Are you an institution or individual? Do you intend to organize a memorable event to be archived for future reference? Then look no further than AAU Studios because it's your best bet. With our spacious studio and state-of-the-art media equipment such as 4K Panasonic video cameras, Kinoflow lights, assorted microphones, live streaming machines and others, you are sure to get the best of production. Visit us at Trinity Avenue, East Legon, adjacent the National Accreditation Board or contact the AAU Studio via the following addresses. Info at aau.org, aautv at aau.org, ransford at aau.org. Alternatively, you can call us on 0244-185-998 or 244 Nine three three four two. Welcome back to Diaspora Connect on AAU TV, the voice of higher education in Africa. Before the break, I had introduced the topic, which is talking to one of the sons or one yes. person who loves Africa. Yes. And this person is a vice chancellor of Adventist University of Africa here yes. in Kenya. And I'm proud to introduce. Professor Delbert Baker. Prof, welcome to AAUT. Thank you, thank you. Yes. Welcome to you, to our campus. Oh, thank you very much. It's a yes. very beautiful campus. Thank you. Yes. We are going to delve straight into the topic. Okay. That is celebrating you as an academic, as a diasporan, with a passion for Africa. Good. Who is Delbert Baker? Well, it's one who believes in education. Uh, I believe in giving my life to Jesus Christ. I'm a person who believes in education. Uh, I believe in giving my heart to Jesus Christ and living a life of balance and fullness and service to people. But one of my particular loves is Africa. And prior to me coming here, uh, I've had many, many trips to all parts of the, of the continent. In fact, I've visited probably some 35 plus countries on the continent, and I love it. Uh, of the four years that I've served here as the Vice Chancellor, President of the Adventist University of Africa, I've deepened my, my respect for this country, uh, for its potential, for some of its challenges, and just the beautiful opportunity to reach out of my own context. I'm an African American from the United States of America, but I feel like you really don't really know what education is all about until you've come, gone to another part of the world. Yeah. And so it's been my privilege to be here for the last four years. Yes. But let's go back. What really ignited your love for the, uh, the continent? I think my own blackness. Uh, you know, some people, they look at me and they say, well, he's a light-skinned African-American. Yeah. Uh, in the United States, that doesn't make any difference. I mean, okay. the fact that if you, if you have black blood in you, you're, you're considered black. Okay. You're considered an African-American. And so from my early upbringings in California, and then later when I went to school at Oakwood University in Huntsville, Alabama, I, I just had a love for Africa, and I, I nurtured it. Uh, I came here in the middle 80s, believe it or not, when I first went to Zimbabwe, and then I went to some other countries. And since that time, I've made, oh, like I said, some 30 plus trips here. Okay. So I, I believe that I speak on behalf of African Americans. We have a love for this continent, many of them, that is, African Americans don't fully understand it yeah. until they come here. Mm. But now that I've been here, uh, when I even even when I finish my time here at AUA, uh, I, I will take this love and, and promote Africa wherever I get, man. Whatever chance I get uh, to mm. okay. expand possibilities for people, uh, to talk about the the wealth and the diversity of this continent and the great potential. Okay, now the African Americans who want to come to the continent. What are some of the challenges that they, they face when they, they, they try to get here? The likely challenges? I, pr probably the greatest one is the lack of knowledge. 
You know, mm -hmm. a lot of people think mm -hmm. Africa is, you know, they'll say Africa like referring to one place. Okay. When you've got 54 countries here and what, 48, give or take, in Sub-Saharan Africa. So I think one is just, just the lack of knowledge, knowing mm -hmm. where do they want to go, what do they want to do when they get here. I think number two is not knowing what to expect when they get here. Right. There's like a dream or this idea they have of Africa, mm -hmm. but actually coming to the continent is something entirely different. So they need to kind of figure out what do they want to do, what is their goal in coming, uh, what is their objective. And I believe three, I would think that people coming to Africa should want to come and make a contribution versus just coming to see the animals or something, you know, going to safari, whatever. Mm -hmm. I'm saying come to, come to be prepared to, to make a difference. And I know that's my, my goal and that's the goal of my wife who's a physical therapist, her name is Susan. And we came with the idea, we're here to serve. Mm. And so I set aside my cultural uh, perceptions or misperceptions okay. and say, let me come here and see what the needs are here and see how we can make a difference. Mm. That's a good mindset, I think, for people who right. want to come to this, mm. this continent. And you believe that the African governments are not doing enough to attract those in the diaspora? I think the African governments are developing. And, mm. and I think that every... Uh, that's another thing about people's perceptions about this this continent. You, you can't group them all together. Right. Every nation is different. Every country is different. And it's got to be looked at in its own context. Mm. So I think that African leaders have challenges. They come from a particular context. So, But listen, listen. My country, USA, with my current president, we have our challenges. Right. Now, there was a time when people said, ah, America's this or that. Uh, but now people are saying that it doesn't make any difference what country you're from. They have their own unique challenges. And I feel the same way about Africa. Mm. Yes, there are some particular challenges. Yes, the leadership here has to deal with the basic issues uh, that they're confronted with in their own context. But I, I'd like to argue that it's developing and we have our problems in other countries like people have their problems here in Africa. Mm. Right. You have tasted education in two cultures, the American culture and then the African culture. Are there similarities? And well, actually, there's where three. Are the gaps? There, there are three cultures. I, right. USA, uh, where I got my education, like I said, at Oakwood University, my bachelor's, and then I've got my master's in divinity at Berrien Springs, Michigan, and I got my PhD in organizational communication from Howard University in Washington, D.C. Right. But when I was in high school, I left my a home state, California, and spent about a year in Jamaica. Okay. And so I actually went to school in Jamaica too, so mm -hmm. I kind of got a little mixed back there. Uh, yeah, there's similarities. I think there's a, a strong desire to learn uh, in all cultures. I do believe here in Africa, as Nelson Mandela is fond of saying, that the most important thing is education. Yes. I, I do believe that's one of the greatest needs here in Africa, and that's why I'm here serving mm -hmm. uh, in the educational area. Uh, and we have to make it broader and more uh, more available to African uh, young people, young and old, who want to obtain their education. Similarities are uh, just our great need to know and to get the basic skills to compete in modern society. Uh, I, I think in all educational ventures, uh, we have to find a way to get tied in with our passion. What is it that we really want to do? And education helps us to do that. And then three, education allows us to get basic skills that we need to really expand and make a difference. Yes. I'm thinking of research in particular. Yeah. So those are similarities. Good educational programs respond to those particular needs. needs of society. And that's what we're seeking to do here at AUA. Right. Well, um, African universities have always been accused of churning out un unemployable graduates. Uh, what's that? Unemployable graduates. Yes, okay. Is that what pertains here at your university? Do you do any tracer studies? Well, well, there's no question about it. Like here in Kenya, uh, there have been a number of initiatives seeking to curb any corruption or a lack of integrity in the educational process. Mm. But again, I would say to you, uh, just recently in the U.S., we had a huge scandal of parents mm. paying for their children to be accepted into certain prestigious universities yeah. and then paying for them to get grades and even paying for them to uh, be cast in a certain light in the in athletics mm -hmm. or in scholastic areas. Yes. So there are challenges, again, all around the world. But uniquely here in Africa, 
there is the real problem with this being such a young continent, yeah. with young people, majority being uh, young people, 35 years of age or younger, uh, with this being true, that the accessibility is crucial. If yes. young people are competing in a modern societal setting and they don't have education, mm. that's a major problem. It, I mean, it is a time bomb. bomb. It's a time bomb, that's yes. right. So I, I think that one of the big challenges is to make it uh, accessible, affordable, uh, in mm. fact, uh, and we must worry about the quality standards here in, in Kenya. They have what they call Q. Uh, the Commission for University Education, yes. and they are very, very strenuous on setting high academic standards. Right. And I think all countries must be concerned about that. Mm. Uh, uniquely with AUA, we have our main campus here in Nairobi, uh, Kenya, but we have nine sites, educational sites, across the continent in Sub-Saharan Africa. So we, we have to be sensitive to where we're going to and who we're seeking to appeal to. Let's say when we go to South Africa or Ethiopia or you know Ghana or wherever or Nigeria. Yeah. So we have to be in tune with the, the requirements of that government. Yeah. And so we have to be sure that they're synced with what with, we have with, here in Kenya right. uh, and then with the Seventh Adventist Church, our standards for education, you know, we have a very strong, large global system. Yes. So we, we have high standards ourselves. But once we once we have the ground rules established, I, I don't see it as a challenge. Uh, mm. People want to learn. Uh, they have a desire for excellence. They, they want to expand their basic skills, uh, what they call the CABs, the knowledge, abilities, behavior, and skills. Yes. Uh, we want to increase these, and that's what we're seeking to do here at AUA, which then brings us to the key element in education, that is you have quality faculty and staff mm. who, who share your vision for excellence in education. And once you have those components in place, uh, that, that's a great, great advantage and then, of course, you need the context. Like yeah. here at AUA, we, we want to have uh, quality facilities. We want to have uh, the ability to expand and to be sure that each discipline that we offer has what they need. Right. I believe you interviewed our dean earlier, Dr. Mm -hmm. Daniel Ganu. Uh, he's the one of our School of Postgraduate Studies. Uh, he's one who shares our commitment to excellence. I think he's a good example. Yeah. Our other dean, Dr. Samson Noma, yeah. who is in charge of our Theological Seminary, and then we have a Center for Continuing Education, right. uh, Dr. Marianne Rezafironi. So those are areas uh, we, we believe in, um, so the academic learning, but we also believe in complementing that with community outreach. Right. It's here in Ngata Rangai, the area we're in, mm -hmm. uh, and in the broader country of Kenya and to other places. Mm -hmm. So I, I will say this to you, that in my fundraising, and I, and I really do a lot of fundraising, Okay. So that we're not simply using operational funds at the school, mm. but we're also using external funds, both here in Africa as well as in the U.S., people who are willing to help us realize the mission of our educational goals. When we raise this money, we use it to build not simply the academic program, but communities and society. Okay. So we have a lot of innovative projects that we're working on to be sure that we help the mm. Uh, indigenous local people as well as the the campus. Okay, just stay tuned in. We're going for a short break. Are you an institution or individual? Do you intend to organize a memorable event to be archived for future reference? Then look no further than AAU Studios because it's your best bet. With our spacious studio and state-of-the-art media equipment such as 4K Panasonic video cameras, Kinoflow lights, assorted microphones, live streaming machines and others, you are sure to get the best of production. Visit us at Trinity Avenue, East Legon, adjacent the National Accreditation Board or contact the AAU studio via the following addresses. Info at aau.org, aautv at aau.org, ransford at aau.org. Alternatively, you can call us on 0244-185-998 or 244 9, Welcome back to Diaspora Connect on AAU TV, the voice of higher education in Africa. If you just tune in, you can follow this discussion on all the social media handles on your screen. And I am talking to Professor David Baker, who is yes. a Vice Chancellor of Adventist University of Africa yes. here in Kenya. Prof, before the break, we were talking about quality and you were talking about quality equipment, quality personnel. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you recruit your staff? 
Uh, that's a great question. Uh, we, we do it carefully. Mm. And, and I think there's no question about it. Uh, we have to be careful in our selection. We have to be diverse in our selection. And we have to be quality minded in okay. our selection. When I came here, you know, coming from the U.S. context and having been a president in the United States for a number of years, uh, you know, we're sensitive about diversity. I came from a historically black university. It's called Oakwood University in Huntsville, Alabama. But we had to be careful. We didn't only bring African Americans in, but we brought um, people of color from around the world, uh, as well as whites and Asians and Hispanics uh, to our school as well. So diversity was important. But when I came to Africa, I, I became very conscious, too, of the, uh, the unique finesse you have to have in terms of thinking about diversity, even with tribes. Right. So we not only have regions, because we serve three regions of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, as in the South or in the East, as well as in the West, but we have to think within that nations. So when we're serving right here at AUA, we have like some 33 countries represented, 32, 33 countries represented. So it's national, we have to be sure of the balance there, but also within that you have tribes. Right. So here in Kenya, we can't just simply hire from one tribe. So it's good. we have to be diverse with that. So as a, as a person from outside of this culture, I had to be very sensitive to this. So I literally keep like a growing sense of, uh, I don't want to call it a list per se, but I want to be sure that I'm aware of the diversity and the ethnicity and the tribal makeup of our school. So we don't wake up one day and find out we have all the one group. How do they say with diversity? If everyone around you who looks like you, you know something's wrong. Yeah. So we want to get that diversity there. So that's, that's one of the key elements we look at. Uh, in our particular system, the Seventh Adventists have a moral values code they use. So we want to be sure that whoever works here, even if they're not of our faith, uh, that they share it's our values, so there's no conflict yeah. with that. Okay. When you're talking about the selection of faculty, I think that's a very, very important question. And in any organization, your personnel makes all the difference in the world. And of course, at a university, your faculty are absolutely crucial. Mm -hmm. Now, the staff are crucial also, but they are more in a supporting auxiliary role. I like to say that the faculty are the educators and the prime ones who are dispensing knowledge and the staff or like associates yeah. in the educational process. Mm. And my philosophy is, Renfrew, it is with my idea is that we want to practice in our administration what the teachers are theorizing or instructing in the classrooms. Mm -hmm. So we like for them to see at AUA what they're talking about. Right. Best practices, benchmarking, ideas. So the idea of faculty was key, and I was speaking earlier about the whole issue of diversity, uh, not only regional and national, uh, but also in terms of the tribal issues here in Africa. Uh, I, I, I see it as being something that's neither good nor bad, it's just a reality. It is. And, and anyone is. who wants to function here has to be aware of that. Yes. And they've got to cast aside all their preconceptions mm -hmm. and say, listen, let me go there and, and be here and be mindful of the environment I'm in. So in my role, I do a lot of listening. Okay. I do a lot of listening. Uh, what's the word stop, look and listen. Uh, I, I come into environment, I, I wanna stop and just literally look around, observe what's happening around me. What are practices, what are mores, what are cultural uh, ideologies that we run into. But then listen with a sense of, let me put into practice what I've gathered. Okay. And so by doing that with faculty, that's key. So we get diversity from all across the continent, uh, different nations and tribes and colors and people, not only Africans, it's an international uh, university, okay. Africa, this AUA is. And so we pull from really around the world. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it's primarily African. Okay. Uh, I'm an African-American. Uh, the predecessor to me was from Ghana. His name was Brimpong Antwi. Okay. Uh, he was from Ghana, so after me, after my time, doubtlessly I'll get someone else different mm -hmm. from another mm -hmm. uh, background. So that's crucial. But underlying all this is the issue of the quality, the critical thinkers, the researchers, uh, the instructors 
who are in the classrooms and who do the magic with the students. Exactly. If you have quality people who can awaken the passion and cause people to enjoy learning, uh, that that's the breakthrough. But the question that's the value. I, I, that's what I your organization stands for. Yes. Do do we have all these quality people here in Africa? Absolutely. And in fact, I, I I am disgusted sometimes when I hear people talk about. Well, can can you find the quality person? Well, you're not looking hard enough. They're quali quality people. Where should we look? Around. So what? Where should we look? Around? Well, look everywhere. Look everywhere. One of the places you can look right off are other universities. Other universities, uh, you can see people who are making a difference in society. Uh, track out where changes are happening, and see if you can, uh, you know, really uh, attract these people. But also, you can develop your own leaders. In many cases, you know, we have people that we identify different places, and we'll send them to get their PhDs or their terminal degrees, and then we recruit them from there. Well, Prof, you know, Africa develops these, pe these people, and then they go out to the West. Okay. And that is where the challenge is. Yeah, yeah, the brain drain. The brain drain. Yeah, brain drain. Yes. Well, in fact, that's one of the purposes of AUA. Uh, okay. One of the reasons why we're having it on the continent is versus sending all of our people for whatever postgraduate education to U.S. or to Europe or, or wherever, uh, we keep them here and we have a quality program that will match that of anywhere in the world. Mm. So we, we attract them to AUA, okay. we don't force them to come. Mm. You attract so them. We attract them. Okay. So these 50 acres of land here in what we call Avent Hill, we share with some other entities, service entities. Uh, everything about our campus, from our library, to our museum, to our classrooms, uh, to our grounds itself, uh, to the new facility, the multi-purpose building we're putting up, everything is saying, we want to pull you in because you want to be here, not because you have to be here. You have no other alternative. Uh, even the idea of online education, where, as you probably know, we're very much into that now, where that's one of our big frontiers, and mm -hmm. I know your organization believes mm -hmm. in this. So these are ways that we want to get the quality people, but I start with the premise that there are quality people around, I just must find them. And you get them from the diaspora? I get them from the diaspora, I get them from locally here as well as nationally or continentally so okay. it's not only from an area so i, I want to okay. stress the idea it's not one area okay i'm speaking about the diaspora uh, I, just a quick word on that you, you know african-american and being african-american um, i think african-americans have a love for this continent uh, in a unique way recently we had a group of 12 of our african-american leaders who were here about a month and a half ago. They right. came here to Kenya, uh, to AUA, and to our division office here. And I'm telling you, it, it was an emotional thing. Uh, many of them were here for the first time, and okay. I'm telling you, there were tears in that meeting. Mm. And uh, the Africans, uh, I think they, they kind of looked at it, they found it interesting at first, but then they realized the depth of it, that African Americans felt like they were coming home. Wow. It sounds a little dramatic at times. People kind of say, ah, you know, you African, you African Americans, you know, uh, really, what is it? No, because we are a people without a real foundation. Hmm. You, you can say, I'm from Ghana. You can trace your family back so many generations. Yes. African Americans can't. They can't. They can't. Hmm. So there's a resurgence of, of appreciation and affirmation hmm. now on the continent of Africa that I have not seen in my lifetime. Wow. And they're saying, Let's network with Africa, let's link with Africa, uh, let's hear about Africa. And your program is a good one because people are hearing me speak, uh, they, they can see me right here in Africa, yeah. uh, from Afro, uh, mm. from United States mm. as, as an African-American, and, and they can appreciate the fact that this is real to us, man. This yeah. is probably more than to you. Yes, it so is you, true. So you know Africa. <laughs> it does like, ah, this is yeah. Africa, you mm. know. Mm. And 2019 so. is the year of return of the diaspora. Okay. 400 years after the slave trade. Fantastic. So all over yes. the continent, we are celebrating the yes. year of return of the diaspora. That's right. Yes. That's right. So the final question I will ask, sure. what are your networks and how are you trying to get them to come to Africa to contribute? Oh, well, that's a great question. And, and I am working very diligently on that. Uh, one is we tell them about the work that's going on here. Okay. We, we tell them about the educational uh, progress and opportunities, and that naturally appeals to people. Right. White and black, by the way. Not simply blacks, 
that's simply African Americans, but but white and blacks, white and blacks, and uh, the other colleagues. races. E even we've had donation from South America. You know, they they love to see mm -hmm. what's happening here. So I think that's one, just sharing the needs. But another one is uh, giving them opportunities to serve. We have instructors from across around the globe who come here to AUA and they teach. And I'm telling you, every time they come, they go back, they're believers. Mm -hmm. But number three, I would say the opportunity to give, to give. And uh, we, uh, like I told you, I'm a fundraiser mm -hmm. and we have raised millions of dollars uh, here uh, to build this school and uh, beyond the school uh, to the community and beyond. And when people find that you've got good projects and good objectives, and they also see that you're going to do what you said with the money. Yes. And they can see proof of it. That is integrity. Uh, I, I, that's integrity. Yes. I, I find that they give, and they're willing mm. to give. So we've mm. had great success with this. Uh, just last weekend, we were in Kigali, Rwanda. Okay. And the Adventist University of Central Afri Africa, another Seventh Adventist institution, uh, they started a school of medicine. And it was a great opportunity uh, just to serve that community and beyond to East Central Africa. Paul Kagame, yes. uh, the president of the Republic of, president. of Rwanda, yes. uh, was, was a keynote speaker for the dedication. We're going to have our dedication here in November for okay. our multi-purpose complex. And we've invited the president, President Kenyatta, uh, to come. We, we believe he will be with us. So I think this is a chance to let people see what's going on here. And when they see it, they, they want to come. They, they, they say, this is something's happening here. We want to be a part of it. And there's something infectious about service. When people are giving and contributing, they feel good. Mm. So I think that's probably my, my final response uh, to your question in terms of when people give either through instruction or finances or influence or prayers, they find that they are enriched and there's a warm glow inside that they feel good about it. Hmm. So I'm giving you the platform as your final words. How are you projecting AUA to the world? And what are your prospects for this university in the next few years? Well, I have the highest uh, optimism and, and belief in the Adventist University of Africa. And I believe that we've only just touched the surface in terms of what we're going to accomplish. I mean, uh, we're only 13 years old, uh, but right now I see a very strong, bright future with, again, the faculty and staff, with the, the, our grounds, with our new facilities, with the fact that we're constantly investing in scholarship funds to build scholarships to make education more affordable. And all of this under the, the heading of Christian Adventist education. Yeah. We believe the sky is the limits yeah. and the limit for this whole process and we believe that God has great things in store for AUA yeah. in the future. On this note, we've come to the end of Diaspora Connect on AAU TV. Continue watching other programs on the station. Take care and bye. <laughs>